and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some more Selesnia tokens. We played this deck uh, four days ago during our 12 hour stream and it went really well. The deck was really fast, uh, looked really good. I think we went 5-0 in our league that we played, uh, playing it for the first time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this deck over to ranked today and give it another try. Basically, we're just trying to be really low to the ground, um, kind of like Mono White, be really low to the ground and go wide. Uh, a similar deck to Mono White, but we are playing green for just a few things. We've got Woodland Champion, which can grow really, really big. You know, every time a creature, or sorry, every time a token enters. Um, that is cool that it's just any tokens, so like treasure map tokens. Hmm, that's interesting. Any token would enter, you put counters on it. And then we got sapling mig migration because we're going tokens, we're going wide. And we got the flower that can also allow our creatures to flourish as well. It's just a really fast, aggressive deck. Um, so yeah, let's give this a try over in ranked today, over in mythic, and see how we do. So we're going to play five matches. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Not that. Traditional ranked. There we go. Sorry, just instinct. All right, we're going to play five matches with the deck in ranked and see how we do with the five. All right, number 758. Man, I've lost a lot since yesterday. Just the natural decay. Hmm. Only a really slow hand, and we're on the draw. I probably shouldn't be keeping this. All right, basically just getting a land out of my deck here. So we don't cut down on the land, so make it a smaller chance that we draw one. There's only 20 lands in the deck. There's the four flowers, though, also. Um, so that's already five of our 20 lands. There's only 15 more in here. So we got, like, a blue-black pirates, it looks like. So it's looking like blue black pirates. That's a good one. So I could not Migration plus Tribunal, you know, but like next turn I, I can Migration plus Tribunal or even Migration plus Luxodon next turn. Prove your skills and I can teach you even more. So I'm just saving the Migration here. Quell your temper. Hmm, interesting. They just didn't attack. Wow, that is awesome for us. Get a Terramander out, out for free. Card sweet. All right, so we'll have flourish next turn. Give our creatures plus two, plus two. 
That should make them pretty big. Really, you've you seen a lot of Spawn of Mayhems today? This is the first one I've seen in a long time. Varchild! Six month streak. We made it six months <laughs> learning not to play Wilderness Reclamation. There you go. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Varchild. Right, another land for us. Not ideal. Certainly hope this doesn't get countered. If they didn't have a counter spell here, they were taking lethal. It's interesting, they just took it all. Huh. Harpooners. I don't know if I need Baffling End also. We're certainly bringing in Harpooner, but I think that may be good enough. Maybe just have Harpooner replace Woodland Champion. I think that's all I'm going to do. I mean, I guess Baffling End is probably pretty good. Everything that we saw is just going to be removal for everything. What would I want to take out of here, though? Maybe we can trim a land on the draw. Normally, I would trim a flower, but I'm going to just trim a land because I think that we need all the green sources possible for playing harpooners here. I'm going to trim a planes for a baffling end. All right. Scooby dooby doo doo. Scooby scooby dooby doo. Is that what they're saying in the song? No, yes, a, a, yeah, a draw keeps the current score. It does not give a win to either player. It just keeps the current score. So you basically just, if you get a draw during game one, you just play game one over again. A draw can occur from Freebooter. Alright, maybe I need the... Oh, right. Freebooter doesn't take Harpooner. That's pretty sweet. Maybe I, maybe I don't need Baffling End. Give me that back. <clears throat> yeah, so a draw occurs like whenever... like. So things that do damage to both players is the the best example. Yeah, like Spawn of Mayhem can do one damage to each each person. Um, there's other effects like that. Like Earthquake is the common the common one there. So History Banali would be my best play, but that does play into Spell Pierce. Let's play Migration. See if that gets Spell Pierced. Okay, that, all right, so no Spell Pierce. So next turn we can go History. Okay, well, 
Or they just draw spell pierce. <laughs> we have done a really good job of drawing lands these two games. For our I have 19 lands in here. <laughs> Already drawn over 25% of the lands. <laughs> there really aren't many lands in here. So we have a 13 out of 48 chance of drawing a land. Leveling up that Terramander is kind of scary. We're just doing that. Seven out of 19 lands. Bleh. All right, so I think I do want Baffling Ends. It's Baffling Ends and Tribunals. Is that too much? Seems like that's too much. All right, we're kind of just trimming, trimming around some different areas. Getting some threes in here. Yeah, you know that you're not lucky whenever you get the 19 lands and draw seven. Um, I did put the 20th land here in on the play. Again. Because March of the Multitudes is just kind of slow. Uh, it's more of like a, a mid-range card than what what I'm really going with here. We're just being we're just trying to be really fast. We already have like the lot of creatures and lands that you'd need for March of the Multitudes. We're just wanting to attack at that point. Should keep it 19 lands though. Play that fourth baffling end. Not expecting a sweeper from them. I'm just playing these underneath counter magic. You never know, they may just go swamp cry the granarium. Make me cry. Yeah, that's how it did. Playing the token deck again. It's a nice one.
All right, want to know? Yeah, this is a pretty nice little deck here. Nice. Doster says that you're this is the only deck you're playing right now at the moment. You used to love White Weenie, but the green splash is making it more fun. That's awesome. Yeah, glad, glad you're enjoying it too. All right, keep. Hmm. So we could maximize, we could try to go for maximizing Woodland Champion. By holding legions, like going like flower now, and then woodland champion next turn, and then like token plus uh, token plus legions landing the following turn. I don't think that's our best play, to be honest. Let's just get the legions landing out there, save bodyguard for after champion. Fine, our our hand's not that bad against uh, Thought Erasure. We're, we're just fine there. Hmm. Vampires. Okay. We're, we're definitely saving this for Flourish. Right, we're, we're going to have five mana now. We're going to save this for Flourish. Um, you know, we can start activating first forward, casting migration, that kind of stuff. We get to start growing this champion too. I have not survived millennia to stand down now. This is but a feast of my power. Soren's unfortunate. Soren's so good. Guess I should have gotten <clears throat> champion up to four four. 
I wanted to, you know, like, by waiting a turn to be able to migration for four here. How are we drawing so many lands in this deck? Really, really hope they don't have a third Soren. Really hope not a third Soren. Well, we need to hit three land drops. But yeah, I have I have twenty in the main deck here. Twenty lands that is. And then of course the four flowers. Yeah, the these uh, the tokens look like that because I have the card style for the migration. Wow, they paid the four life. All right, risky. So they're going to 10. Hmm. Well, if I play Luxodon, then I don't get to... Don't get to attack at Soren. I guess we don't get to kill Soren right now anyway.
they're of course going to use like the vampire of the moon is going to be training with a champion. Oh, darn it! But I'm still waiting in case we would draw it, like a conclave tribunal. Maybe take the vampire of the, of the moon or something. I don't think we really need Pride of the Conqueror. We already have a lot of Anthem effects between the Flourishes, the Benelish Marshals, and the Venerate Luxodons. They block those two, go to 19. Block, block, so. Um, I don't remember what the end of season rewards are this time. Maybe somebody in chat remembers. I don't, I don't remember. They already did risk factor. I don't, I don't remember what they have here. Okay, no, so they're keep, keeping Soren alive. No, they're not keeping Soren alive. No, but like, what are the, the card rewards this time? I've seen these tricks before. That was a good combat for them. Wait, was it? I require your body. Yeah, getting rid of both. Your soul. The Vampire of the Dire Moons. Oh, it just says, yeah, the two card styles. Does anybody know what the two cards are for the card styles? Yeah, you get you get one in gold, and you get usually like an uncommon in gold and a rare in, in platinum. Lag, come on, cast the cast the top deck. All right. So vampires, we could play a bunch of baffling ends if we want. I like that death touch life link one drop. I think next time I play vampires, I'm going to take out vicious conquistador and play that. I don't know dire, dire wolf. 
Dire Moon or whatever. Whatever the name of that other vampire is. I like that card. Lexon's Binding for Soren may not be so bad. The thing is, they have... We did see Mortify Game 1. So I'm still going to have, like, the Tribunals, you know? Still have a little bit of interaction here. I just want to go wide. Yeah, I like the Raise the Alarm. Yeah, I think it's an it's an awesome card. I used to play this card all the time whenever with Jeskai Ascendancy. Also, it's a great card. They're gonna minus, put in a vampire, and then we'll be able to take out Soren. Haunt of High Tower, huh? All right, so I'm not gonna be flipping landing. Life link too. Certainly don't. I certainly hope they don't have mortify. This is kind of the I have mortify mana here. Lame. But I'm glad they're doing it now. You know, if they... If they did it on my end step, it would be a lot harder. I guess this game's gonna be taking a little while. Certainly hope they don't have any more Mortifies over there. They're not playing land, so that's scary. Definitely scary. They're sitting over there waiting. This can get blown out by Ritual Set. Kind of 
Maya's Wrath. Definitely felt like some kind of Wrath effect. That they were holding on to creatures. Makes sense. We will rebuild, though. We will rebuild. Yeah, I played Orzhov Knights the very first day of this format. That makes sense. These dire moons. Crazy. Crazy, I tell you. Uh, yeah, they. this creature has death touch. If I would have double blocked, both of my creatures would have died if they didn't have anything. So the... The I lose nothing by double blocking is not correct. I would have lost both my creatures because of death touch. Well, <laughs> uh, that's not how that's not how death touch works. You only have to assign one damage with that touch. So they would be able to do one damage to one creature and one damage to the other creature. Well, I kind of wish I would have just cast the Flourish. Oh, gosh. They have a very good anti-aggro post-board game here. Like, all of these cards. Like, these things are, like, really hard to get through. This thing's super annoying. This card's incredible. This card's really annoying. Just all their things just say gain life. And then they have Kai's Wrath also. Yeah, we're... We're dead with this Vona. This is going to be hard to hard to get through. And Mortify also. Hmm. It's going to be a hard one to win.
All right, let's give this a try. <coughs> yeah, cutting our our woodland champions, or whatever the name of that card is, because the with the death touch, getting a large creature isn't as valuable. So we're gonna try Gideon instead, and we're gonna play a couple baffling ends to get rid of those or the Adanto vanguards or something. Bodyguard's better later to protect some creature. So shocking would have been better if their next play is... <laughs> Dang it. Uh, I was going to say, if our next play was Benelish Marshall, shocking would have been better. <laughs> Obviously, it was Benelish Marshall. <laughs> Should have just shocked. <sighs> Life. Audio magics. I have other obligations. Staying on that two month streak. Thanks for that reset there. That is sub number 10 on the day. That's a sub goal towards the next 12 hour stream. We'll be cracking a pack here. We need to stop drawing lands though. Our 20 land deck. It's just been happening all league. So six out of <clears throat> six out of twenty lands, close to thirty percent. No reason to keep cards in hand because of Basilica Bell Hunt. Attacking would do three damage right now. Now would have only done two. Actually, would have done zero. So glad we didn't attack. Of the wilds, what's that card? Is that the is that the card we're already playing?
Hell yeah. Please block like this. They gotta just have Kaya's Wrath, right? That's gotta be Kaya's Wrath if they're blocking like that. Darn. It was Kai's Wrath. You lost what little trust I had. Okay, can we finish this out? Pretty stoked your sub too, Rise of Life. Oh, sorry to hear that balding Yeti. It's going going just fine over here. Yeah, going fine just fine over here. So making it so the Soren can't bring back anything else. Next turn, I'm probably just going to be attacking with all. I'll trade Benelish Marshall next turn. Yeah, I think this is just... Oh, well, that's... Gotta be lethal. That's a lot of damage. Okay. Two and oh. Our opponent flooded out more than us there. But our they're probably playing more than twenty lands also. Like we are. Yeah, I did not think like after like looking at that game two with all their cards in their deck that were like so good against us, I did not think we were gonna be winning that one. Yeah, I thought it was lethal without it too, but it definitely was with it. Our clay reanimator was pretty sweet. Our losses were, were really demand of trouble. We had a game we're flooded out really bad in a game where we couldn't draw any lands kind of thing. But the, the deck overall was pretty cool. It was fun to play. It was my favorite read that is not necessarily the best, but my favorite um, like traditional Phoenix deck that I've ever played. So they thought they were like all safe playing this Firemind's research, and then suddenly, boom! <laughs> Twelfth hour. So they have Firemind's research, huh? Let's play a couple Black Blades. They're probably good against a deck that's likely going to have a lot of burn. I don't know if I need Demystify against Firemind's Research. That seems like a little overkill. I'm just going to cut a flower on the draw, actually. Play another champion. Awesome, Rattleclaw. Yeah, glad, glad you enjoyed the changes and everything. This deck's just no nonsense. I call it, said it last time. It's just no nonsense. Yeah, the Orzhov Sacrifice deck played good decks too. We played against uh, a, bo a budget Boros Feather, but then Naya Feather. Esper Control, Sultai, Command the Dreadhorde. 
and mm, uh, blue-green ramp stuff. You know, like blue-green bunch of mana creatures, misses, crisis, like that kind of stuff. Playing separately Migration means the next turn we will be able to go History plus Luxodon. Playing the Woodland Cemetery means that we could go Migration Luxodon. Or we could go History... I can't really do anything with History. Bacon Bolt? All right, you got me. I think I'd rather have that counter than history. Yeah, we'll see how... Yeah, I could see Huali's Rapture maybe having more of an impact after a rotation. It's, it's a card that's kind of on the weaker side in general. I think it's been too weak for this standard format, but maybe after rotation with Wild Growth Walker and company leaving. All right. Our 11 cards have given us 20% of our lands. Now higher than that. really unfortunate. So if if our creature would have survived there, I would have been able to play Luxodon and then Conclave Tribunal, but now we just get Conclave Tribunal. I think I need to take the search for Escanta before that thing just buries us, though. I wish I didn't attack with that 2-2 right now. Our life would certainly be better if I didn't make that attack. Wasn't really considering Brineborn Cutthroat, to be honest. Hey, Birox. Yeah, this closing deck is very good. Me too. That's a good one. Is that every opt yet? Seven lands and 13 cards. It's pretty rough for our 20 land deck. All right, now we're kind of out of it.
Yeah, ionize is pretty strong. All right, definitely getting these bindings in here. I even cut a flower already. Darn, we really drew a lot of lands. We need to hit like three mana sources. To be able to get you know, we want to be casting Benelish Marshall and History History of Benalia. History of Benelish Marshall. So it's hard to not have too many, and we do have a card. More likely they have negate than they have spell pierce. What if I just play Luxodon here instead of flipping landing? So obviously the forest is awkward with Benelish Marshall, but I'm kind of counting on the Legion's landing being flipped. for our third white source. Alright, nice. I guess I should have just Conclave Tribunal that thing first. It dealt another two damage. Because I still would have been able to play the, the other thing second main. I should have just tapped my four lands. Alright, 3-0. Lesnia tokens. This deck just kind of wins. This deck just kind of wins. Ugh. 
Yeah, the R over here means that we're playing the deck in ranked. And in, in that case, I usually play five matches in ranked. The 2D stand means it's a donation deck, so it's a viewer submitted deck. And there we go. We're on the draw. That's unlucky. Maybe we'll draw Legion's Landing. Oh, really, Tsunami? I'm sorry. Four matches is still a really small sample. And Magic's a hard game, too. But, you know, anything can happen. With that kind of sample. I'll try not to have it keep you down. Cool, no Brynborn Cutthroat. I did not want to see a Cutthroat here. No extra land drop, huh? I feel like our opponent needs a history lesson. Yeah, this is Snow Patrol. You know, David of V. What is V? What's the history of that? We are in, in no way like winning this matchup right now by a long ways or anything like that. Our opponent can certainly... We're just at the mercy of our opponent, basically. They could have this in the bag. We don't know. But we're going to try... We're trying to give them a history lesson. Seeing if they learn or not. i will see how many... Yeah, how many fogs they have and everything. Countering mill in the sideboard? I don't I don't understand. Like you're you're playing against mill? I don't think you need to I don't think you need to have any sideboard plans to try to counter mill. I would like to test the new hypothesis with you. I don't Let that's not aid your research. something I have thought about in a very long time. But if, if you want something, the the absolute best thing is Gaia's Blessing. If you want a card specifically just to beat Mill, play Gaia's Blessing. You don't even have to be playing green. It's a green card, but you, you can play any color. Just have it in your deck. Playing the Benelish Marshal would mean that I wouldn't lose to a bounce spell. Yeah, this is going to be... This is really hard for us to beat from here. I think this game may be over.
We did some cool stuff. This is why we're playing 3 Demystify in our sideboard, though. Is for this matchup. That's why we just randomly have Demystifies over there. To the library. Little surprised they didn't just minus and grab root snare again. So that makes it real makes it seem like they just have another root snare in hand. I'm assuming they drew that Nexus off the Chemistry's Insight. Cause it, oh, I guess if they... 3, 4, 6, 7. Yeah, they had 7 mana. So yeah, if they had that Nexus just in hand, they really need to cast it first before taking up Tamiyo. You know, just puts another Nexus in their deck. Makes it a higher percentage chance that they hit one. If our opponent plays this right, we shouldn't have any chance of winning. From here. Alright. No, we're dead. Alright, we got these bindings and these demystifies. I can play some Gideons also, because Gideon can minus six and exile stuff. So that's cool. Probably don't need Wilden Champion. Two flowers. No, we need to take out a three drop. Marshall or history? So, Ixlon's Binding costs four. or two mana away from that. Hmm. I mean, if we if we draw land, this really is pretty good. You know, our first land getting Gideon is nice. It's not perfect, of course. You know, we have a, this is a two land hand that we're going to be able to have raise the alarm and migration and stuff. The problem is this is Ixlon's Binding, not Conclave Tribunal. This is so close to wanting to keep it or not, honestly. I think this is this is definitely a keep before London Mulligan rule, but London Mulligan rule means this is maybe a mulligan. This is just so, so close. 
I'm gonna mulligan. Alright, we'll give this a try. Don't have much of a clock, but we got some interaction. Raise the alarm. Good draw. <clears throat> no land drop. Darn. So I have lethal next turn anyway, like even without without playing Benelish Marshall, I have lethal next turn. So I wanted to see if my opponent would just tap out for Wilderness Reclamation. And then if they, they play Wilderness Reclamation, we destroy it with Demystify. But they also just may not realize that we have lethal, of course, and maybe they don't even leave up mana. game. GG. All right. Game three. Should have killed Escanta first, though. I didn't really want to show them another Demystify. Um, I don't want them to be thinking, oh, man, they have, like, a ton of Demystifies kind of thing. Oh, if we had another land. If we had one more land. Man, this would be really nice. I want to keep this. We have two two turns to draw land. Because, you know, we're on the draw. Playing Gideon because of the minus six. If they're just fogging us to death, this the Gideon can still exile stuff. Like, literally one land in this hand is insane because then we have, we get everything. Let's try it. If we drew the land there, I would be playing the Legion's Landing if we if I knew I was going to be able to raise the alarm the next turn. We don't know that, so I'm going to just play the Dauntless Bodyguard to get the faster clock. Not ideal. deal at all. Every 
story as an opportunity for new data. I think you will find my notes helpful. Come on. Hmm. Subject is easily agitated. Hmm. I know I noted this somewhere. This is bad. Well, at least they're not blowing up last zone. So close. All of these games, game after game after game of us having so many lands. We'll get one where we just don't. Yeah. Nice. Now we stopped flooding. Oh my gosh. The past is never forgotten. Land. We just haven't died yet. No, we should be dead. To the library. It's like our opponent's not ha hasn't even been playing lands in a long time either. Because they they played Tamio and they've activated Tamio like what like four times. Haven't even played a land yet. This is insane. We've gone seven draw steps, no lands. So yeah, this was this is turn seven. Seek and find. Turn eight. The storied past holds our future. Turn nine. I have learned little here. It's 
10 draws now. Turn 10. I'm not playing that anymore. We gotta play one more, can't end on that. don't have green mana, of course, but Legion's landing and to raise the alarm means we get to flip the landing pretty quickly. We don't have very many green spells, so we probably won't draw any more green spells before we draw green mana. Certainly have more green mana than green spells in the deck. Oh no, never mind. Drew a green spell. Yeah, Bruzy, this is the same list we played the other day. Draw a Benelish Marshal. This isn't making me want to play another league. I should have mulliganed my hand, I guess. Could have mulliganed. Okay, we're in there. Suddenly we're in there. Yeah, the Sacrifice deck played really well. We outgrinded a lot of good decks. Our sideboard here, like, honestly, we we could fit in, could fit in um, honor guards in this sideboard. You know, like the the more popular Risen Reef gets, the more you can fit it in. You you kind of have to take out Venerate Luxodon, or like Woodland Champion. Like you just 
would swatch it, swap out Woodland Champion for Honor Guard if you're sideboard like when sideboarding. Baffling End doesn't wreck either either deck, my deck or my opponent's deck. Doesn't wreck either deck at all. Why did I just do that? I could just played one for I could just paid six mana for one. That would have just been better. So that's what kind of happens when you're frustrated. You just don't play as well. You have to do your best to not get frustrated. Yes, Baffling End is a good card against Risen Reef, but saying it wrecks the deck is just just flat up lying. Just not not even close to being true. They still draw their card. It's just using a removal spell on their their thing that already drew a card. Yeah, it's good. It's good to remove Risen Reef from the battlefield, but it doesn't wreck their deck. They still have thirty cards. Ugh. I like our matchup. I think we'll win. <laughs> I think we got this. I think their deck's going to be too slow for us. I don't think I don't think we need a baffling end. Risen Reef. I think we just kill them. We're going to kind of need something to do before turn three, though. I mean, History into History into Benelish Marshall is a really strong... series of plays. I guess I'm on the play. All right, just please draw a two-drop deck. Come on, draw draw anything that costs one or two here. All right, that'll do. We need our lucky black cat.
if we draw land, uh, we'll be able to Conclave Tribunal after sideboard, after, you know, with attacking everything. Well, I guess we'll have all the tokens, too. They're playing Flame Sweep. Honestly, didn't think Flame Sweep was, would be in their deck at all. Not, not a card I thought was in their deck. Obviously, I could have played around that better. I did not realize this deck with all these little creatures was playing a Flame Sweep. The good news is it looks like they, you know, just have lands after this, or you know, maybe a removal spell. Def definitely a removal spell. Oh, or a crisis. Not a good last two games for us. So each land drop draws them a card and makes a 2-2 two -two and puts a counter on something. Doesn't sound like we're competing anymore. These 0-3s slowed us down. Seven lands. Why do we always just have like one land or seven lands in our 20 land deck? So I was I started at number 700. We went 3 and 2 and now I'm down to like number 950. Wow, they dropped us a ton for just losing two matches. Yeah, flame sweep was absolutely back back breaking. Not a card that I was aware they'd be playing. Cuz if I if I could do that over again. I don't think the Baffling End's really a, a card that's necessary still for that matchup, but I do wish I would have brought in Gideon Blackblade if I knew they were going to be playing Flame Sweeps and stuff. I, I wish I would have had the Gideons. 
but we did see fry from them also so they could have we could have had gideon and they would have just fried the gideon so anyway um so our deck started off really really well you know last stream we went 5-0 with the deck today we started off 3-0 everything was going really good then we ran into nexus which is admittedly a kind of a tough matchup but that game three we kept a one lander because it would have been it was like the perfect hand if we drew a second land and we went 10 turns and we didn't draw a land in 10 turns still before i conceded and then yeah played against teamer there first hand was bad second hand was also bad to flame sweep Eh, Risen Reefs, whatever. That was the the other time, like whenever we played this before, we were just rolling over the Risen Reef decks. Um, but Flame Sweep, like that that hand that I kept <laughs> with just you know the double history Benalia hand, it was it was definitely a slow hand, but you know could hit really hard on turn five and turn six. But not against Flame Sweep there. All right, whatever. Anyway. Uh, that's it here for Selesnia Tokens. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed the video, um, even though it was kind of a demoralizing ending. But definitely still a strong deck here. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, Selesnia Tokens here, and I will see you for the next video.